evil isn't just a darker shade of good. We see so much of that. And honestly, are they all a part of the same writer's room? Do all these writers like get together? Star Wars too. There is no good and evil. It just depends on what side you're on. It just depends on your point of view. Do they all get together and hash things out and find ways to inject that into the mythologies where it doesn't belong? It's not like we don't get plenty of stories like that, where there's shades of gray, there's shades of it's not just black and white. Like Arcane's a good example too. I just binged that again recently. It's so good. Like even the villains, like they have believable character motivations and that they believe that what they're doing is for the good of their own. They do the work of putting in those believable motivations. So it's more than just a black and white in certain situations, but they do the work of portraying that. And again, it works for that IP and it's done well, but in regards to Tolkien's Middle Earth, it doesn't. And it ends up just diminishing and watering down the lore and what makes it so special. It taints your heroes too. How are we supposed to think when they go off to slay orcs? Are we supposed to think, well, they have a family at home. How could you? That's what the Rings of Power showrunners just do not understand. They just want to dismiss and cherry pick parts of what Tolkien wrote in order to just make the story their own and put their own stamp on it, as opposed to keeping with the spirit of what Tolkien wrote. Dune's another example. There's like a couple of really good characters, but it's mostly yeah, just shades of gray, and it mostly concentrates on human themes of a lot of things that we see in the world today, and having those themes incorporated into this particular universe. But for Tolkien's Middle Earth, this is fantasy, and this is good and evil. It doesn't work for that. And there's a place for both. I'm glad that Dune is Dune, and I'm glad that Lord of the Rings is Lord of the Rings. We need these stories, something to aspire to, heroes to aspire to, and to see them overcome evil and these fantastic challenges. It strikes at something deep within us that we appreciate and want to aspire to be. And I'm having a hard time with seeing any good qualities. Elrond's okay, and there's good characters, like essentially good. When I say good, I don't mean like well-written because it's hard to say that, but there's a few that are supposed to be the good characters, but that are wrestling, like they have this taint to them, whether or not they're like morally gray or morally ambiguous. And it just doesn't really belong in this. And in regards to certain characters, it could be well done when it comes to Galadriel, but there really isn't any nuance when it comes to Galadriel. They just paint her as very one dimensional and she should not be tempted when it comes to Sauron the way that she is. You could have done it well because she was tempted by the power of the ring but ultimately yeah she passed the test and while there's like some inclinations in that that's why frodo was so special she is essentially good and that's what we want to see in our heroes we want to aspire to them they could write a story about a redeemed man like boromir etc exactly and i don't mean to say that there isn't any black and white when it comes to like individual characters because yes there is definitely room in there in tolkien's lore but i mean like the overall the themes should be good versus evil that this is what the peoples of middle earth are fighting for that the overall theme you shouldn't get the feeling of moral ambiguity redemption was a major theme with tolkien but what made it relatable was characters where you can understand how they walked down the wrong paths and yeah it's just lacking some nuance in that it's just very juvenile in how they decided to depict it it's really boring too that's the other big sin yeah so speaking of that i honestly really do wonder how the views are doing because First of all, they dropped three of these episodes in the middle of the night on a Wednesday. It takes so long to get going. The pacing is, it starts to go and then no, it, we cut to somewhere else and then it doesn't flow well. It really is a slog to get through. And, and if I wasn't talking about this, if I was just a regular viewer, I would have just turned it off after, maybe I would have pushed to the first like two episodes. But then after that, it really became a chore. I felt myself just wanting to go do dishes or something or fold laundry. I had to actively force my brain to pay attention. It just repelled immersion. Your general audiences, they may just have it on. I don't know, but they're not going to sit there and watch it if they're even going to continue to watch it. So after the first two episodes, I had to watch The Lord of the Rings. I watched Fellowship in the Two Towers over the weekend. And I'm just continually amazed at how perfect those movies are. Literally at any point, if you step away from a movie like The Fellowship or something, if you have to pause it and come back and then you finish it later, I'm just immediately back in it. I'm continually amazed at how I feel the same every time I watch those movies, Peter Jackson's films, that I'm immediately back there, immersed in the story, immersed in the world. I'm just in awe. I love it. The music, the setting, 
the characters. I'm just in it again. After how many times I've seen it, I'm just always amazed at how I'm right back in it every time on a repeated viewing. And that just speaks to how well those movies were crafted. The knowledge and the passion behind it of everybody in front of the camera and behind the scenes and the cast and down to every extra and prop master. You could see the passion in that. The knowledge and the passion and then just wanting to craft something to live up to Tolkien's legacy. They stay true mostly to Tolkien's themes and words. Even if they took some creative liberties here, which it rings a power, I feel like they go out of their way to take creative liberties that they don't need to, but they do. At least they could just try to maintain that same spirit and even with that i feel that they go out of their way to uh, depart from that like with the orc family why why do that is that gonna mean anything i feel like they just threw it in there this random scene and, and speaking of that i think that was in episode three immediately after that they introduce a troll i think was he a river troll or i forget his name was damrod he has a very short conversation with adar <laughs> very very brief he got his message the troll asks where sauron and that's it. We never see the troll again. And I'm like, what was the point of this scene? This entire scene of showing the orc family and showing the troll. I think that was the only time we saw Adar and them in episode three. And then we never see them again. And it doesn't matter to the rest of the story. Why did you put that in there? And that just speaks to, again, the main problem. Like the, with this show, the way it is set up, we're just continually jumping around to all these different characters, and none of these storylines really connect to each other. It's so funny, me just remembering this show, I just remember like bits and pieces. I have to think about what episode that was in, because it just feels like this random collection of scenes strewn together. It's like a major issue that people had. Even fans of it were saying that the way they jumped around was very jarring, and even when they we're at a place, maybe with the dwarves or in Numenor, and something would start to happen, they would jump to the Harfoots, which they didn't really care about. And it just interrupted the tension that you were trying to build and build something there in that story before you're off somewhere else. And it's just worse in this one. We have just random scenes that feel like they're just thrown in here that have nothing to do with the rest of the episode. Why did you have this in there? Why not just save it for another part of the show? I guess if we're gonna see the troll somewhere, why did you introduce him in this one when we don't see him again? It's annoying too because of how much potential is wasted.